Hello my soccer universe for our last one for this weekend and we soon we will have another one. Um, I know I'm a little bit late for the Dutch league because when this posts we probably have the have the Christmas round for the Eredivisie is already in the books but yeah so be it uh, I just want to wait for the results from the Premier League from yesterday to kind of have an even picture there. Um, I'm wearing Liverpool, the away jersey 10, 10, 11, which proves that also a bad team can have a great jersey. I do this for a reason, which we'll talk about in a bit. Headlines. Um, Liverpool's goal scoring form, uh, goal scoring exhibition uh, continues and uh, really at Crystal Palace it was just a parade of uh, great goals. We have City also beating uh, Southampton. Arsenal continues to have troubles and in probably the biggest matchup we had that um, Leicester wins at Spurs, sending Spurs down and United has a field day against Leeds. Uh, and in the Eredivisie, yeah, I mean, PSV and Ajax keep winning, so I mean, that doesn't change much. Uh, we have, but goals they score, each of them four, so that's great. Let's talk a little bit about the games. Uh, I actually sat down uh, uh, Saturday uh, lunchtime, sat down a little bit with my daughter uh, to watch Crystal Palace play Liverpool. I didn't actually plan it, but I said, okay, that sounds interesting enough. I uh, was then completely horrified in what Liverpool was playing in because uh, the Palace home jersey against the black Liverpool jersey, that was not a good contrast at all. Proving A, that Liverpool probably doesn't have a suitable uh, alternate kit. They would probably, you could use a white one, but uh, more importantly, why are they not playing in this uh, turquoise kit there? I know the goalkeepers have sound something, but, but uh, I think visibility should go first. And either those turquoise kits are completely non-usable or uh, there's something else going on. I have not seen Liverpool play in these. Uh, please let me know below. The game, yeah, was not that great and I could really afford to take a nap late in the first half up uh, into halftime. Uh, Minamino scoring already in the third, uh, Mane finishing a nice move in the 35th and a really nice goal by Firmino where Robertson plays a nice ball, he comes in and the way he then with the outside of his right foot uh, puts puts in it was really, really nice. The good goals came coming, I mean Henderson's after uh, Alexander-Arnold assist was already really nice. Firmino then dinks it all, uh, over, Salah comes on, uh, Mane was not happy of going off for him and Salah uh, heads it in, I mean it was more or less he was hit on the head but his uh, finish in the 80-84th, that was just a beauty. I still think that the first Firmino goal was probably the better team goal in many ways. I was actually quite excited for Southampton against Man City because you know a little bit I, I was hoping Southampton continues to form and can beat Man City. Man City was the better team, especially early on in the first half and Raheem Sterling gets a well-deserved goal. I also did not quite understand the jersey matchup there. Um, maybe I can live with the um, white jersey, but why the dark pants for City? Why can't you play in your home jersey? They're light, light enough and they will provide enough uh, contrast against Southampton. Anyway, I think Southampton had a valid call for a penalty because there was a high foot uh, in front of Ings' face, or maybe at least an indirect free kick. Um, De Bruyne in the second half couldn't finish it off, and late on, yeah, there were not even half chances for Southampton. I mean, they tried, but it was actually not that great of a game. I was actually hoping for much more. Did not only saw highlights of Everton Arsenal, but yeah. Arsenal had, was a little bit unlucky because David Luiz late on uh, he, uh, in the second half hits only the uh, woodwork. However, um, they have a, they have a own goal in the 2022nd. I mean, Calvert Lewin claims it, but you could see it clearly it was deflected by holding in the inter goal. Nicolas Pepe equalizes with a penalty, but then Yeri Mina um, just before the half establishes uh, Everton's lead again and Everton getting a little bit out of the slump, pushing Arsenal much more into the slump. And I know heads are already calling for Arteta who had this bizarre, and I, you know, I, I'm a numbers guy, but what he did there did not make much sense. It was a really bizarre press outing. Um, to be honest, I am never in favor of firing a coach, although Celta Vigo proves me wrong at the moment. I think the problem is not Arteta for sure. Um, and then, 
Sheffield United almost got, got a win. Fulham uh, won one draw at Newcastle in outdoors. Again, we don't want to waste too much time on. Leicester's win at Spurs was, you know, um, from all that I hear, also a little, little bit see Spurs counter attacking style did not really work against Leicester. And if you give away such a stupid penalty I have with no need that Vardy, the Vardy converts just before halftime, you're not bound to win. Um, Madison had a goal disallowed for offside, one of those marginal decisions, and then uh, Vardy forces all the world into an own goal in the 59th, basically settling the game. Yes, it could have been interesting if Son would have converted this big chance. It was a great save by Schmeichel. But overall, it seemed rather, I don't want to say convincing by Leicester, but Leicester were the more mature team. And despite what Jose says, I give it to uh, Leicester of pulling out that win. And uh, Spurs had a pretty rough week. Uh, a few weeks ago, I we were still thinking, could they challenge? But now they're falling a little bit apart. Um, still, everything still to play for, but we'll see in the chances Spurs. Spurs' stock is definitely falling. Um, Manchester United stocks is on the rise, but I still don't think that they will challenge for the title, although they have a great squad. The coach still holds them back, not this time, time around. I mean, he got Scott McTartman in, who is the f within three minutes scores two goals. Leeds just going out, attack, 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 attack. And Manchester United saying, oh yeah, Lou looks at yeah, that's cute. And slices, um, cuts in. One after the other, Fernandes, Lindelof, uh, make it 4 0 by the 37th. Cooper pulls one back. Um, then, the second half, David James and uh, Bruno Fernandes penalty uh, make it 6 1. Probably the best goal by Dallas very late on, but too little, too late. Um, yeah, I think Leeds is gonna get found out. I still think they will stay up. But I have to be a little bit careful. Um, Villa has no problem on Sam Elizabeth's uh, debut at West Brom. You know, uh, I don't like this firing the way it happened, so I want West Brom to go down again. Burnley actually beats Wolves, which has big implications, as, as we'll see in the relegation battle, because that is an unexpected win for Burnley. And I saw uh, most of the game of Chelsea against West Ham was rather underwhelming from Chelsea. I mean, uh, the way Silva could, was free uh, to head in the lead in the fir in the 10th minute. Uh, I mean, the what was West Ham thinking there? I mean, he's such a free header uh, from a guy who is known to have a good ass. I did not expect that. Then, I think if West Ham would have had a striker up front, they probably could have gotten an equalizer that don't have it. And very late, uh, Tammy Abraham Within two minutes, scores two goals. Um, one was a shot that actually Werner probably should have made before. Yeah. So in the end, not much to talk home about for Chelsea, just get the win. So in the standings now, Liverpool, of course, having already some distance now um, ahead of Leicester. United moving up there as well. Um, as we will see already, the game's a little bit less, also with Villa. Um, but at the moment, we have Liverpool, Leicester, Man United, Everton, Chelsea, Spurs again. It's uneven. Let's adjust for that. And we'll see that actually at the moment it would be a Liverpool United uh, top of the table, which has many people excited about. I just don't see it. I still think if you look at the chance that Manchester City is the one team that I would trust more to get a run going and move, um, in, uh, move to challenge Liverpool, although it is quite a distance already. But if anyone, it's probably Manchester City. Uh, Spurs on that one moves into seventh because Aston Villa, um, despite ha having two games less, they move way up. I don't quite see that yet, but who knows how it will happen. Arsenal, uh, you know, below Southampton then, not much happening. Uh, City moves, is still here in eighth, but let's see. Uh, how they will move in for the Champions League spots, and then we go to go to the bottom. Um, we have City and Liverpool are still odds on favorites. Remember, it's really still early in the season. Um, and then United, Chelsea seem like the other two teams with uh, Spurs, Leicester, Everton, Villa only having outside chances at the moment. On the bottom, West Brom and Sheffield United um, seem to be set to go down, and then. 
Fulham took a big blow with this Burnley win, uh, but Fulham has been actually performing quite well as of late, so maybe Fulham uh, might stay up. I'm worried also about Brighton because they play well, but such just don't score goals. And that's also kind of a sad state a little bit because uh, they are a good side to watch. Whenever I watch Hal 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 from them, it's actually always fun there. Uh, just... On Boxing Day and a little, little bit after, we have actually quite some tasty matchups. Leicester against Man United, I think, is the standout tie there. We also have Arsenal Chelsea, which is a big name matchup, but Arsenal is not all that great at the moment. Um, I wonder also how many goals will Liverpool score against West Brom. And then very late on, Wolves against Spurs seems to be like one of those matchups where, yeah, uh, both need the win to get out of there. And just for completeness sake, I also add the round just before Christmas because I really don't, don't know uh, if and when I will make uh, highlight videos. In that round, um, Chelsea Aston Villa sounds like a really interesting uh, tie. Everton Man City, maybe Angelotti can do something. We have to see there. Um, United Wolves goes the same there. Uh, and you know traditional Newcastle Liverpool uh, just before the new year but I honestly don't expect this to be much of a contest either. However, it's a very dense schedule. Uh, players need to be rested, so we don't know. And also, just before Christmas, we have the League Cup, uh, which is a competition I don't pay much attention to. Uh, in the Netherlands, um, we had uh, there are a few uh, results that pop out. I mean, the one that uh, pops out really is the one on the bottom, but we get to that last. Um, we had the Valwijk PSV, you know, PSV toying a little bit with them. Um, have to say, they uh, the first goal assisted by Götze uh, from Gagakbo was a really nice assist there. Then Ihataren I um, after Rosario assist make, makes it to it was never really in danger that PSV will win that one. I'm not sure why I cannot see highlights of Vitesse against Feyenoord, uh, but Vitesse gets the win and actually establishes themselves as probably a bigger challenge to the Ajax and PSV than uh, Feyenoord is at the moment. Darfalu getting the winning goal there and Ajax having no problem with Den Haag whatsoever. Uh, they scored all their four goals between the 20th and 32nd with the uh, last two being within two minutes. I mean uh, there was a kick kick of them just get it uh, directly. Hunter Hunterler scoring two, Tadic another one. So yeah quite interesting stuff there. That they then give up two goals through Den Haag late is probably a little bit um, <laughs> sour grapes there. Um, and then let's talk about Alkmaar against Willem Dwey. I did not see anything of the of, of the game, but Willem Dwey had a 2-0 lead also because uh, Alkmaar goal was um, called off in the 29th. But before the half, Copa Menas uh, makes two goals to level the score. And then they pull, pull away by the 70th. It was 5-2 for Al Alkmaar very late. Uh, Willem Dwey can pull one back. So not as crazy of a game as you might expect, but still a 2-0 lead and 5-2. And in the end, it is 5-3. So in the Eredivisie standings, again, there is not too much adjustment that we have to do. I think we will get the um, AZ against um, Utrecht matchup rather soon back in. But we have Ajax and PSV on top and we test just leapfrogging uh, Feyenoord. Uh, we don't need to adjust much if we just we get just AZ getting a little bit higher up. Um, and then we have um, the round uh, just before Christmas, a few games will be played today already by PSV, namely uh, against Venlo, which should be an easy win. Z against Vitesse, I think, is an interesting one. I actually should have no trouble with Willem Dwey and Ferro against Herrn Wien um, is then the late game there. So, yeah, that was it from Northwestern Europe. Uh, film in if you want to add something uh, to my... Um, to my summaries from this match day, give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!